Hi guys, in this video we're gonna talk about these photos and how I took them. They look a bit different from other macro photos, right? The perspective is a bit weird, right? And that's because I used a very special lens. This is the Venus Optics Laova 15mm f4. It's a wide angle macro lens, which is very unique. As far as I know, this is the only wide angle macro lens that you can buy in a store today. And I've been playing around with it for the last week or so. Venus Optics were very kind to let me borrow it to do a review. And uh, yeah, they sent me a copy that was a bit dirty, but otherwise I really liked it. Uh, the lens itself is pretty lightweight and uh, it feels sturdy, it's made all out of metal. And it even has a shift function, as you can see here. It's a bit hard to operate the shift function, but it can be useful in some cases. We will return to that. Anyways, uh, the lens is 15mm and uh, you don't have to use it as a macro lens. Uh, it's a very wide angle, as you can see here. And it's useful for landscape photography or yeah, any kind of photo where you want to fit a lot of stuff into your picture, then this lens is perfect. It's of course manual focus only, no autofocus, but when it comes to macro photography or wide angle photography in general, you kind of don't really need autofocus, you kind of want to focus manually anyway. At first I spent a couple of days shooting this lens without any flash or other external light sources besides the daylight. And uh, the results are pretty good. Uh, these shots I took at f4 in just a normal summer day. And uh, you get enough depth of field to actually capture an insect and uh, some of the background. And as you can see the bokeh is very very nice. The lens has 14 aperture blades and they produce a very smooth and nice bokeh. I like that. The aperture ring does not have any clicks, uh, which is good if you're doing video, but I found it a little bit frustrating because I often confused the aperture ring with the focus ring, but I guess it's something you get used to. Otherwise the handling of the lens was pretty nice. Uh, the focusing ring wasn't the smoothest I've ever tried, but it was okay. And out in the field I was very happy with it. This is another picture that I took without a flash, and as you can see at f4 you get pretty decent depth of field. Otherwise I was quite happy with the optical performance of this lens. It is sharp at all apertures and the only problem I noticed uh, was that when you're shooting into sunlight or any other bright light source, it uh, suffers a bit from flaring and from uh, bad contrast. So I would not use this lens primarily as a landscape lens. But for macro photography, I was very happy with the optical characteristics. <laughs> anyway, after a couple of days of shooting without any flash, I wanted to try with a flash. So I used this setup and uh, all the parts I've mentioned in the description below if you want to buy them yourself. I use a diffuser as well, uh, but I put the flash pretty close to the diffuser. And one thing you will very quickly notice uh, about this lens is that it's, since it is a wide angle macro lens, if you want to take uh, shots at high magnification, you really have to get very close. And this is why I put the flash uh, so close to the front of the lens. Uh, basically, uh, most of the things you're shooting at the 1 to 1 magnification will have to be like just a couple of millimeters in front of the front element of the lens. And if you have been doing some macro photography before, you know that it can be quite hard to get insects to stay once you start getting closer with your camera lens. And if you want to take shots where the insect is just like a couple of millimeters away, it will of course be hard, but it's not impossible. You just need some patience. In the right light conditions, uh, the insects sometimes get uh, a bit blinded by the sun, and that is when you can sneak in and take a shot uh, at very close distance. And also, a lot of insects, they don't really care. Like this bug, he just sits there and doesn't care at all that I'm pushing this lens uh, into his head basically. 
so you need to be patient and find the right insects that aren't as skittish as some others. Hoverflies are a great subject. They don't care that much that you take their photo and they look quite good on picture. As you can see here, the front element of the lens is pushing against the flower and that is how close you have to be to get this kind of uh, footage. But it is great fun once you nail a shot. Uh, pictures like these are pretty much impossible to take with any other lens on the market. So uh, yeah, I mean if you're really into macro photography and you already have a normal macro lens. Uh, I would recommend this lens because it is so much fun and you can take pictures that are impossible to take with other lenses. And uh, yeah, it is a challenge. You will not manage to catch all kinds of bugs, uh, but the ones you do catch will make for very interesting photos. When you're doing macro photography, you want to shoot at a small aperture in most cases to get uh, a good depth of field so that the insect is sharp from front to back, or at least uh, for as uh, deep as possible. And with a small aperture, uh, not a lot of light gets in, so in most cases you need to have a flash so that you can have a quite high shutter speed despite the small aperture. And it was a bit of a struggle to place the flash in the right position with this lens because you need to have it very close to the front element because that's, that is where you want to focus. Uh, but still you don't want the flash to shine into the front element because that harms the contrast and kind of destroys the whole picture. So it was a little bit hard to find exactly the right angle of the flash. But once I'd done that, uh, the pictures came out very good, I would say. Here we have some guy crawling on my <laughs> action camera. Uh, I tried to photograph the bug on the lens as well. Uh, in Swedish we have a word uh, called linslus, uh, which basically is lens louse. And this quite literally is <laughs> a lens louse or a lens bug. As you can see uh, what's unique about the wide-angle macro lens is that you always get a lot of the surrounding background into your frame, which is pretty much impossible with a normal like 100 millimeter macro lens. I also tried to uh, test the shift function a bit. It is useful uh, when you're photographing something like this, something that is tall and straight and uh, as you can see here I'm trying different uh, settings on the shift function and you can see that the perspective changes quite a lot depending on how you place it. And you can also see in the corners that they are a bit dark uh, in some positions. And the shift function was a bit hard to use. It does not work as easily as on a dedicated tilt shift lens. Uh, but it can be useful in some cases even though it only goes in one direction. All in all this was uh, a very fun lens, a very unique lens, uh, I had a lot of fun with it and I considered purchasing it for myself because it is the only one of its kind. And I think it's good value for money if you are a dedicated macro photographer who really loves uh, doing macro photography. This is a nice addition to your lens collection. That's it for this video. Please give me a like if you did like it and please subscribe if you aren't already to get more uh, photography tips and maybe mostly macro photography tips going forward. I try to post a video per week so see you soon again over and out.